Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about potential energy diagrams and what they tell us about the force acting on an object. So what is a potential energy diagram? Well, it's just if you plot the potential energy as a function of the distance um, uh, position of an object. And this is a distance in one dimension. So this is going to be a one dimensional situation here. So imagine you have something like a hill. Because gravitational potential energy depends linearly on the height of the hill, you can literally think of uh, a hill or a, like a valley, excuse me, is shaped like this. So what happens if we put a ball right here and the question we want to ask is what force does it feel? Well the connection between the force and the uh, potential energy diagram is that the force is going to be equal to the negative of the slope of the potential energy diagram. Okay, So if I put the ball here, this is a positive slope. Positive x is that way, negative x is this way. I take the negative of that positive slope. That means the force is negative, which means it points this way in the negative direction. So it does exactly what you'd think it would do. It rolls back down the hill. Now, at this point, it's converting its, uh, as it rolls down, it's going to convert its potential energy into kinetic energy. And then it's going to roll back up to this point where its kinetic energy is converted back into potential energy. And uh, it's going to stop and turn around at that point because its total energy is equal to all potential energy at this point. And so it's going to stop and turn around. And these actually are called this point and this point are called turning points because that's the point where the total energy is equal to the uh, uh, potential energy. Okay, so at this point it's got a uh, negative slope. Negative negative is positive. That means the force is positive. Positive is that way, so the force is going to point again back down towards the, uh, the bottom of the valley. And what happens if you put it right here? Well, the slope at this point is zero, and so the force at that point is zero. Uh, so it doesn't feel, if you put it there, just in, like if it were a ball, you would put it there, it would not move. Um, this point here is called a, a stable equilibrium point. Okay. Now, this is useful for thinking about the direction of the potential energy and the force on big objects, but it's also especially useful for thinking about forces on things like molecules. Okay, So in that case you have an object, two, two atoms that are connected with an, a molecular, uh, uh, they're bound together through a molecular bond, and we think of these as like springs connecting them together. So if you get them too close they repel, and if you pull them too far apart then they attract. And so what that what that potential energy diagram looks like is, well, if you have them uh, separated a long ways apart, they're going to want to attract. So this is the separation distance here, r. Uh, that, that's the variable there. So if you have them separated with a large separation distance, they want to attract. So they want to reduce r, which will be a negative force, which means I need a positive slope here. And if I put them really close together, they're going to feel a large repulsive force, which is going to want to increase R, which will be a positive force, which means I need to have a negative slope. And so if you plot the potential energy diagram here, you're going to get something that looks like this. Now it's worth thinking about stability for this too. So if you put, the, put them initially at this separation, so that means their total energy is up here, uh, it's going to convert that potential energy into kinetic energy here, but then when it gets to infinite separation, that is R goes to infinity, when they're infinitely far apart, they'll still have some kinetic energy left over, and so they won't be bound to each other. So your molecule is just going to fall apart. What you need to have a stable molecule is the total energy needs to be less than the, the, potential, ener the potential energy at large separations, so that uh, what will happen is if you put it here, it will, it will oscillate back and forth in between these two points, and uh, eventually it may settle down into a stable point here. So if you put that, if you initially put them with this separation here, I'm going to call that R0, 
then it will just stay there because it's a stable equilibrium point. And that is going to be the natural separation or the natural uh, size of the molecule, separation distance between the two atoms of the molecule. All right. So this is the connection between potential energy and force.